there's only a top percentage of men that really make money. Okay. You know, so it's the majority of men that don't make money, that can't make money, and there's so many restrictions on how people can make can't? money. No, but no, but realistically, what is that word? I don't. I think you should just be able to have a friendship with women, though. So, going back to what I was saying before, it's pointless to have a female friend because if you have a female friend, it's kind of unspoken, but you're going to be designated to protect her if something pops off. So if I'm going to be designated to protect a woman, I prefer it to be my girl. Now, going back to what you're saying about women offering utility for, well, they can give you another insight. I've interviewed almost 1,600 women now at this point, and I would say, without a shadow of a doubt, women are absolutely terrible at being understanding what it takes to be attractive to women as a man. Hmm. So their advice typically is not good at all. Oh, I don't know. I'd have to disagree. Can you give me an example, please? Oh, so, uh, so when we bring girls on, we actually have a segment. We say, <clears throat> so you think it's easy to get women? And they'll always say, of course, yeah. I'd, if I, was a, if I, I can get so many bitches. And I'm like, okay, really? Okay, fantastic. Then we go ahead and pull out some mics and say, hey, either me or Fresh, we act like a girl. We say, okay, what's the scenario? Are you meeting us at a bar, a coffee shop? What is it? And she picks a scenario. She even picks how she looks, how much money she earns, etc. And we pretend to be the girl, she's the guy, we stand in the corner and we want her to approach us and act like a dude. And I think almost every single time, maybe one time a girl actually like didn't fell, uh, fell flat on her face, they don't know what it takes to be attractive, they don't know what it takes to have a good tonality, they don't know what it takes to have good body language, how to appropriately set up a date, how to not come off weird, how to get a phone number, how to not trick or simp. You know, a lot of girls just lead, hey, I'll take you on a date to Komodo, and they don't even know the girl's name. So <clears throat> we basically give like similar objections that girls give all the time, like, oh, I have a boyfriend, or oh, here's my Instagram, but don't give the phone number. And it's hilarious to watch women fumble with their own typical objections that they give to guys. And they don't know how to overcome it because they've never been a guy and dealing with a woman. Because when girls deal with girls, right, like lesbians or whatever, they kind of know what to do and you get, a, you get away with certain things. As a guy, you can't mess up because girls will like disqualify you for anything. Yeah, okay. Well, that's the, thing, the thing is, I do agree with you. I do kind of understand. Mm -hmm. I can never completely understand I'm a woman, but I understand from like a male's perspective, I'm not disagreeing that it's not hard for you. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I kind of feel like this, men carry like a lot of like hurt and they push it on women. Okay. What we basically highlight on our podcast is you need to be the best version of yourself. And I think the thing is, is that guys are yearning for this because we've been lying to men for the better part of five to six decades about what being masculine and strong actually is. We've been demonizing it when in reality, guys need to become stronger because no woman wants a weak man, even though girls say dumb shit like, oh, well, you know, I want you to be emotionally intelligent and get in tune with your feelings or whatever. It's yeah, all a lie. Oh, see. Okay. No, there's a, but I personally would like a man that's emotionally available and emotionally intelligent, but it's not me saying like, I want you crying all the time. So, do you know what I mean? I, I, it's true though. We tell guys not to be vulnerable in front of your girl. You know, you, you go ahead, you're gonna be vulnerable, you're gonna shed a tear, whatever. You do that around other men that understand, you know, the male experience. Women don't understand the male experience at all. And it, it goes to show, like when I said earlier, when you put the girl in a male perspective, I want you to pick up this girl. They always fall flat on their face because women are in a privileged position where they don't have to necessarily understand what it takes to attract the man because men come to them. So what's like the code? So what's like the, how many codes is there? Well, it depends on the girl. You know, you, if you deal with a girl that's younger, that's in her prime years, well, you got to understand that she's more, you know, inclined to look for fun. If you're dealing with a girl that is in her mid twenties, a lot of times she might be pursuing, you know, it depends on the girl, but she might be pursuing some type of stability or some security and you got to play at that angle. Or if you deal with a girl that's a little bit older, late twenties, thirties and up, nine out of ten times she's going to want some type of security if she hasn't gotten it already. So what so kind you, of woman do you want? Sorry. Me? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I can, I can deal with whatever. My thing is, I need her to come into my life and be an asset and not a liability. Wow. Most girls are liabilities, to be honest. So how do you know you're the top guy? <laughs> she doesn't flake. She gives you the best treatment. She actually has, you know, enthusiastic sex with you versus like it being like a mission. She, she, sometimes she initiates the sex. There's a bunch of different ways to, to tell if you're the top guy. She doesn't flake. She responds to you immediately. So, I mean, if you take an average attractive girl, she's talking to five to 10 guys at any time. So you'll know right away when you're the number one guy. Oh, really? Yeah, you gotta be the number one guy. The girl always has to like the guy more than she likes him. So what's your type? My type? Mm-hmm. Hmm, not fat, not rude, not obnoxious, 
polite, fit, feminine, friendly, submissive. Simple stuff, man. That's a lot, Pleasant. though. I feel like to say not fat's rude, though. I'll make it simple. Fit, feminine, friendly. And coachable. Yeah, and coachable to be what? trained. You got to train women, man. I, I know that sounds terrible, but a lot of women have bad habits. Yeah, but so and, do men. But the, but I, I, like, I agree. A lot of men do have bad habits. I agree. But, but here's the difference. Gone. Women don't like it when they get criticized. If I go on a podcast and I say, you know what, guys, you need to stop being bums. You need to get your money on point. You need to be, be, uh, stop being fat POSs, etc." They actually admire and respect that. People are in the, in the chat, flame emojis, whatever. I go on rants on the guys all the time. I'm swaying, going crazy. It's like I'm delivering a, a preach. You know what I'm saying? I'm preaching over here. And they, they, they respond favorably to it. But the reason why is because men are okay with criticism, right? And no one clips it and puts it on TikTok when I yell at the, guy and tell, the guys and tell them that they're bums. However, they will clip it when I tell women that they're useless. So what's the issue here? It's not that... Um, the issue here is that one gender can't take criticism while the other one can. Because here's the reality. Men, if they're losers, their reality is reflecting upon that. If I'm a loser, I live with my mom, eat Cheetos, fat, dork. Well, I'm not getting laid. My peers don't respect me. Okay, my, my environment represents like what I've achieved or not achieved in life. Women, however, you can be a bimbo, stupid, whatever, but you're mildly attractive, you're still gonna get a bunch of offers and attention, etc. So women rarely get held accountable for their poor decisions. Men do though. Men have to live in reality. For me, like I understand like the value a man brings. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm never gonna sit and argue the fact that men are trash or anything like that, because I don't think men are. Mm -hmm. But I kind of feel like my issue is it's like this. But they do need to step up, they need to do better. Who? Men, in general. No, but this is what I'm saying. Like, men genuinely do. Because for me, like, my circle of, like, the women around me are really good women. Mm -hmm. And what I've seen from my experience with all these women, like, that have probably made the wrong choice with, like, the wrong father of their child. But it's kind of like we have this hyper independent wave of women mm -hmm. that don't know how to submit. Because for me, in, in an ideal situation, I'd love to be a submissive woman that stayed at home, had my business, done what I wanted to do for me, and did have a man. But realistically, I don't want to give you the power to condescend me to be like, you wouldn't have that if it wasn't for me, because this is what men do. You then, it, like your ego runs away with you mm -hmm. and you don't know how to actually respect women because with everything, it's like you said, you don't see women as equal. They're not. No, but this is what I'm saying. You're saying that we're not, but at the same time, there's no respect for me as a woman of what I'm bringing to you. Oh, okay. So you're, you, here's the thing. You're looking at equality from a human perspective. I'm not saying that men are better than, than women from a human perspective. I'm saying that men are leaders so therefore, we cannot be equal. When you're on the battlefield, right, and the lieutenant or whoever the, the commanding officer is on the battlefield, you're not equal to him as you know, a regular soldier. He is the leader. You're not equal, but there's a reason. There's a hierarchy to dictate order. If the woman is equal to the guy, well, who's going to make the final decision? Nothing gets done by a committee. There always has to be one leader in charge. There's a reason why there's a president, there's a CEO, etc. Both people can't be Alphas, as they say. The problem is this. Women are confused about what men actually want. They think a CEO, a boss, a business owner, an uh, ambitious, uh, competitive woman. Mm. We don't give a shit about none of that stuff. Men don't care about that. And I would argue the more money a man makes, the less he cares about his woman's ability to earn money. And critical thinking means being able to look at reality, see what's going on, apply some critical thinking, and fix problems from a deductive, problem-solving standpoint. A lot of girls lack this. They follow people like Nicki Minaj, you know, Mia Khalifa, Lana Rhodes, whatever, Kim Kardashian. These are all terrible representations of what women should be. What a girl is supposed to do is come into a man's life, see where he's deficient. Okay, I noticed that you like to go to the gym at this time. I'm going to make sure that you have a protein shake with as many grams of protein as you need, the vegetables, etc. When you come back, not even asked. The place is spotless. I noticed that you have an issue with organizing your files or you like to have your things in a certain order uh, when you come home. I'm going to make sure that's done and I'm a deductive problem solver. I'm able to be observant because that's women's gift is being observant of social situations. That's why women are socially superior to men. Oh, you're, I, I thought you were going to say that's sexist. Okay. Uh, no, it's I'm never not, sexist I'm, when a guy mentions something about no, a woman I'm, that's positive. So a woman's job is to use that social calibration that they have that they're superior to men in and be able to be like, okay, this guy is deficient in this and deficient in this, etc. Let me come in, compliment, make this guy operate. He's already operating at 95%. I'm going to get him to 102. And when you're at a high level already, that extra 2, 3, 4, 5% is what helps you beat the competition. Women do compliment men in that yeah. way when it's the right partner. But the problem is, like, yeah. I, I have this issue. Like for me, everything you listed, I will do that if it's my man. 
But the problem is I'm not going to do it for every man. I'm not going to just do it because that's what you expect. It will be the right time because you could be dating multiple people. So why am I going to give you this really good treatment if you're not even valuing me? So it, Question it, for it you. takes a while to get to that level. So women will do that. A lot of women will give you that life. They will give you that balance. They will compliment you. But yeah. they're not going to just do it until you're serious. You know, because men like to play the field for a very long time. So let's take your logic. Let's say you want to work at a prestigious law firm. Mm -hmm. You walk in there in your pajamas and, you know, you're unkempt and you say, you know what, listen, I know this is a fantastic law firm, but I'm going to wait it out a little bit. I don't know if we're a good match yet, okay? But y'all should give me the job anyway. Okay, you just sit there. You know what they're going to say? Get the F out of here. We got a bunch of other applicants that are qualified that are going to show up and take this job seriously. Men give relationships. Women give sex. If you want a relationship with a guy who's worth something, you're going to have to compete. And girls hate that word. I'm my own competition. I don't compete with nobody. That's stupid. That's an asinine concept. We all compete. When a girl gets dressed before she walks outside, putting on makeup, wearing the latest designer, all women compete. They just refuse to accept this. So if you're going to go and try to work at a prestigious law firm, you better come with your resume, dress well, have experience, etc., and be ready to start the job and be on point. But modern day women think, I'm gonna show up just the way I come and they should hire me. That's not the way the world works, which is why so many women fail and strike out when it comes to men. They go ahead, they show up to the job interview, they think they're gonna get the job. No, you get sex only, recreational use only, bam, never get the actual job. You're a temp hire. Yeah, so why though, like this, why can't you just like value women, not just like have sex with them? And disregard them. It's on the woman to prove to me that she's worthy of a relationship. That's where a lot of girls make a mistake. They'll sit there and say, I'm good, I'm loyal, blah, 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 blah. Uh, no, I want to, you know, see how you do before you get promoted. I'm not going to give a girl the position of, you know, a secretary or underboss, right, or second in charge of my company unless she's been vetted. She's got to work her way up. The problem is that we give women CEO jobs when they haven't proven themselves and they don't, don't respect the job. So, We're in England, right? SAS, very competitive, right? Intelligence agency for, for um, the UK, right? CIA, FBI, same thing. There's a bunch of background investigations done, right? Mm -hmm. the, your resume has to be a certain point. You can't have done certain things in your life. You're automatically disqualified. It's highly sought after because it's difficult to obtain. Things that are difficult to obtain typically have some type of value. So what women got to understand is that when you want a certain type of guy, there's certain things that may disqualify you from that position. Not life isn't fair and that's just how it goes so girls got to be willing to compete and they think oh, I should just be accepted this, that's not how it goes because women reject men for way less a guy will get rejected for not having the right shoes on you know I think men are way more forgiving when it comes to dating and giving women relationships than women are to even giving a guy a phone number hmm. you might be the exception because you have you might be in the top percent of men because you have all these things you know like you know, your looks, your fitness, yeah. money, but everyday men don't have that, you know. But I never said, I was very careful to say that's what all men want. The problem is that most guys can't do it. So therefore, they're restricted to monogamy by force. In most relationship, the relationships, the woman has the leverage and she dictates the terms, the terms of the relationship. So most guys can't like kind of have this mindset that I have. It's like my way or the highway. You know, most guys have to kind of concede to what their girl wants. This stupid quote, happy wife, happy life. I think that's the dumbest quote ever. As a man gains more status, success, income, etc., the woman wins. She's, uh, all his success, she benefits from that. But when a woman wins, it's not the same. When a woman makes more money, earns more status, etc., and she starts to outgrow her man, she's going to look for a better man. Men and women are not the same. That's right, but some women, we are emotional beings. Like, we will stay with Which the man. Which is a man. problem. They're no, erratic. But, no, but we will stay with the man. Like, if a man loves us and is loyal, we will stay. Really? Like, is that why women initiate an overwhelming amount of the breakups? Because they're emotional and they're loyal? No. no but women I, are the list, most disloyal creatures that we have. Yeah, but I feel like you're... Comp like, Which is okay. Yeah, but the, with my circle of women that, I'm, like, that I know and I represent... I think it's unfair because even like on your podcast and it's no disrespect to any women on your show because mm -hmm. like, you know, they hold it down for themselves. But you, you have a kind of like caliber of women that okay. are like accepting to that lifestyle, like, you know, hookup culture, only fan culture and stuff like that. So I kind of feel like your reality and perception of women is where women will like that lifestyle. Well, you're actually incorrect. And the reason why is because we've interviewed almost 1600 girls from different walks of life, different countries, different areas. And most of the girls actually aren't from Miami. Um, and a lot of them are educated, bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, PhDs, professional, some porn stars, etc. Different from uh, women from all different types of walks of life. 
And what I've come to realize is there are some very distinct um, similarities between the women, regardless of socioeconomic status, etc. I would argue the more money a woman makes, the more selective she is in wanting a guy that makes more money than herself. So if anything, when a girl's educated and has a business and makes money, she is even more ten toes down on her stances. She's less willing to concede and less willing to tolerate a man that isn't adequate. So you might say, oh, women are emotional, but they're more likely to stay. All the stats don't show that. Women overwhelmingly initiate breakups. So how do you, what kind of women do you date then? Women that are assets to my life and not liabilities. Typically girls that are trainable, right? Because they'll come in and I'll just tell them, hey, I need you to do this. As soon as I start, I start dealing with a girl, I start putting her to work to, you know, accentuate what I got going on. And PA. as a byproduct of that, she benefits and she enjoys the, um, the process. Women like to build with a guy when the guy's in a leadership role, but she would like to come into a castle that's already developed, if that makes sense. Well, she wants to just decorate. There. The foundation's got to be there, baby. The days of women building with you, those days are done. So do you like that? So do you like the whole, because like over in the States, that whole sugar baby kind of lifestyle, <laughs> man look after the woman, uh -huh. that's you? No, not at all. But that sounds like it. Like not you want to be this provider. Mm -hmm. So that sounds like it. Well, here's the thing. But then you moan about women for doing that. So, you know, if you I don't moan. I, ac I accept that women are, are um, hypergamous creatures that want to get their needs met through men. I accept this reality, and I've accepted it a long time ago. I'm a firm believer that men need to be men. Men, men need to lead. Women follow. Men pay for dates. Men should provide. Men should be breadwinners. I think women working should be elective. I don't think it should be mandatory. I think the man working is mandatory. Um, and I think every girl should be given that opportunity if she's in a relationship with a guy like myself. But, um, you know, that's going to come at a cost. So I'm going to be extremely um, selective on what type of girl I bring into my life. Because if you bring in the wrong girl, she can turn your life upside down. So as far as like the sugar baby thing, I tell guys all the time, and I've been open about this, despite people trying to say, oh, my new you exposed. I tell guys all the time, go on sugar sites and use them to, to date. Because there's a lot of girls on there that aren't necessarily, how do I say this? Um sugar babies that are just looking to be taken care of and paid an allowance. There's a good amount of girls on there that make their own money and or just want to deal with a guy that it has his stuff together. Because let's be honest, Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, these t traditional dating apps, they fail 90 plus percent of men. And the stats show that. So, you know, sometimes, and this sounds horrible to say this, but how you meet a woman matters a lot more than meeting the woman. What I mean by that is that women place a lot of importance in the context under which they meet you. If I go meet a girl at a nightclub and I say, hey, what's up? Nice to meet you. She might disregard that interaction completely, right? Versus if I meet her uh, at, a, at a boat, right, that I paid for, a boat party, well, I have higher perceived status. She might take that interaction more seriously. Or if I meet her at a mansion party where I'm a special guest where there's only 10 guys and 100 girls, well, she's going to take that more seriously or some type of exclusive situation. Or if I met her on a site that is traditionally for sugar babies or whatever, I have higher perceived status. It's my job as a man to not get finessed, okay? Because mm -hmm. most guys, again, comes back to what I said. Female game is predicated on men not understanding their own value. If a guy gets finessed, it's his fault. Did, did you ever get finessed? Because I find, kind of feel like you run this every girl's flag take, so hard. Like, what's, every guy's taking L's. I wouldn't be in a position to be able to give this information if I didn't take plenty of L's. So I take what, L's every day. I take L's to this day. So is that what you? But is that what inspired you to start the podcast and not start speaking on it? Uh, well, I mean that's okay. I'll give the cliff notes. Um, I noticed like first it was fitness, and then I noticed a lot of guys want to get in shape to get girls, and then, um, and then the thing is, I realized like okay, well if you want to get girls, you need to have a whole package because I'm you know as you know I live in Miami. Girls are extremely <laughs> cutthroat there. You really got to have your stuff together because you're competing with athletes, celebrities guys that have money, et cetera. So you can't be a loser down there and expect to attract beautiful women. It makes, it's a very competitive dating marketplace. So I was real big on guys becoming an entire package. You gotta get your money on point, you gotta get in shape, you gotta um, obviously dress well, groom yourself well, not be a bum. You gotta take care of yourself from a holistic package and become the best version. And then the women are a byproduct of that. But, uh, but yeah, that's kind of how it, how it started. Anyway, so thanks for coming. How was the flight here? Not bad, took about Seven, eight hours. Okay. How yeah. do you find, like, have you been out in London yet? No, this is like my first time. Ever? I came as a kid, but I'm not going to count that. Okay. I'll be, it'll be interesting to see what, like, your experience with London women are. Uh, okay. Can I be? They're not as hot as the girls in Miami. I'll just be honest. Yeah. Um, you know, but Miami's an anomaly. Like, we got the most attractive girls, you know, per capita, like, in any, some place in the world. Like, if you could compete, like, maybe with, Colombia, Brazil, etc. But yeah, I mean, 
Miami's an anomaly. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. I mean, I'll, I'll try to womanize here and see what happens. But my standards womanize. have went up. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's not good. That's a good thing. Women, for you. women love womanizers. Mm. Absolutely. See, it's such a negative term, but womanizers are actually the best guys. Really? They know what's attractive. They know how to take a girl out on a date. They know how to treat a woman well, etc. It's the weirdos that you guys don't want. The womanizers are the ones you guys want. The misogynists. Those guys. Oh. Yeah. I like, don't get me wrong, like, I, I like a man that's got, I'd, I'd call it, what would I call it? Chivalry. Like, I do like a man that knows how to look after a woman, but not a womanizer. That's sexist, though. Why? Oh, uh, See? No, I'm asking this question. So no, before you start, I, I, this, yeah. <laughs> because, see, um, women typically don't call things sexist that benefit them. So chivalry in itself is sexist inherently. You're treating a woman differently based off of nothing more than her gender, which is inherently sexist. But women don't complain about that. But if I say something along the lines of, men are physically superior to women, oh, that's sexist. Yeah, well, that's, that's reality. No, but just to be like, oh, I'm superior, surely you can Physically understand. Physically superior. But surely hmm. you can understand why that would be irritating for women. It's the truth. It's not always, actually. I don't like math, but I know one plus one is two. I failed algebra, but I accept that algebra is it, it's a fact, right? But women get mad. See, I said, like you said before, chivalry, that's sexist, right? But no one cares. But if I say men are physically superior to women, oh, my God, that's sexist. I would argue sexism benefits women. Really? 100%. Why is that? Because with sexism, it adds a whole other standard and a whole other league for women. I mean, if there wasn't sexism, there wouldn't be a WNBA or a female MLS, or we wouldn't have different standards for you know, female police officers or female firefighters, etc. I mean, actually in the UK, if I'm not mistaken, female firefighters can fail the test and still get the job, versus a man would never be able to do that. So sexism benefits women in mm -hmm. all regards almost. I can't think of anything sexist that benefits men, besides maybe being able to sleep with a lot of girls and being respected, but that's tough to do. Like going on sex and mm -hmm. stuff, I think I do agree. Like it's a lot harder for men to get sex, but I kind of I don't understand like why there's so much obsession with like this body count and everything and the double standard. Okay, so in what because that's a multi prong question. What regard like do you have an issue that men have an issue with a woman's body count, yeah. or do you have an issue with men wanting a lot of sex? A bit of both, really, because I kind of feel like me, you get mad okay. if a woman mm -hmm. is sleeping with multiple men. Yeah, rightfully but, so. Mm -hmm. But then if you do the same. Men and women aren't the same. Okay, let's have fun with this. Fun. Let's say. Let's have fun. <laughs> let's go into a hypothetical scenario, okay? Let's say me and you grew up down the street from each other, right? And I grew up rich, you grew up poor. And at 18 years old, I get an inheritance of $5 million, right? I didn't work for it. And you see me living my life on Instagram, I'm lit, oh yeah, I'm all over the place, I'm Jeff flying, I'm Ric Flair, woo, you know, limousine riding, Jeff flying. And then you, on the other hand, you bust your ass, you go to school, you start up a business, you start up another business, and you end up scaling up your businesses and you become worth five million as well. Ten years passes by, we're both 28 at this point, we meet at a high school reunion. You're like, oh, I haven't seen you in forever, I saw your Instagram, living life, but now I'm kind of broke because I've been spending my money like an idiot. And I've been blowing all my money on coke and hookers in Vegas and doing a bunch of other stupid things with my money. However, you saved and invested and you pretty much built your net worth up. And then I go ahead and I tell you, hey, you should invest in X, Y, Z. But you, knowing that I lost all my money, would you take my advice seriously? No. Why not? <laughs> See where I'm going with this? Yes. Okay. So in other words, you're a self-made millionaire. I'm a trust fund baby. I didn't earn this money, okay? You, however, earned your money. I'm not in a position to tell you how to spend your money and or invest because you built it up from the ground up. That's exactly how sexuality goes with men and women. Men must create their value to be able to get the sex. Women are given their value up front to get the sex and they don't have to work for it. So a trust fund baby can't tell a self-made millionaire how to spend their money. So that's why I always think it's ludicrous when women try to reel in, well, why do you want to have sex with so many girls or blah, blah, blah. Well, you didn't have to bust your ass to become a self-made millionaire. You got the money up front, and you spent it like an idiot. Yeah, but like, so why, why do men have such an issue with women for it? That, that's not our fault, firstly, and it's kind of like men... Wait, wait, wait. No, but I mean as in, like, the, the way you're thinking around, like, the way it's centered around women and sex and stuff like that. Okay. Um, well, how about this? Let's say me and you are dating, right, hypothetically, and you find out that I might have 
done some gay porn in the past to make some money, what would happen? Keep it a thousand with me. What would happen? Yeah. I feel like... You would break up with me. That's the truth. You would leave me if you found out. Well, because I would assume that you were gay. And okay. then I'm your secret to cover up your gay But well, my past matters, right? My yeah, but past... it's not necessarily like the fact that it's your past that matters. It's just the fact that you aren't being... But it was, the, it, it was unattractive. It was very... That's how men feel about women that have a, a past. Men, I'll keep, to break, break it down succinctly, men are interested in a woman's past, women are interested in a man's future. So guys want to deal with a girl that has no experience or little experience. Women want to deal with a guy that has a lot of experience. That's why women look for ambition and confidence, etc. Men look for you know, youth and beauty because men understand that when they take a woman on, they're supposed to be the leader. But we don't want to deal with a girl that comes with bad habits. That's why men value a woman that's inexperienced. Women value a man that is experienced. So you can train them. So it's kind of, so it's not, that's not as in we're bonding on that. That was just like, so you want, like, it just sounds like just men always just want virgins that have hadn't had sex with anyone and are really good girls. That's it. That's, and it's like you want younger women as well. So it's like that whole predator vibes. Well, it's not. No, it is. That, but that's realistically, like, say it how it is. You want younger women that you can manipulate here we go. just to mold to your lifestyle. And it's not here we go. That, that's literally it. Okay. But it's perspective. So you, you're now going to word it and I say. I got a question for you. You're going to word it and say, Oh, it's like a woman that, you know, understands, she's submissive, and she does all this. So it's about perspectives. Okay, we're saying we want a woman that we can manipulate, that's dumb, right, that's timid, etc. Okay, that doesn't understand her worth. Is that fair? No, that it's not that. I'm just saying, like, it's perspective. But, but no, but that's what you're saying. Like, that's what men want these that's types of women. That's how it sounds. That's how it sounds. Okay. Like, you want women that you're What if I said manipulate? women are stupid, can't make money, short and weak because they want a guy that makes more money than them, taller than them, more confident, ambitious, etc. That would be ludicrous, wouldn't it? Because I'm demonizing what you want, but we don't do that with women, do we? We don't tell women, well, you're stupid and you're broke and you don't have your own confidence and you don't have your own ambition and you're just inept. We that's don't tell women. Do. That's what you but, guys no, no, do. No, 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 but that's, but see my logic here. We don't shame female preferences. Okay, when a woman says, I want a man that's tall, makes money, etc., you go, girl, you deserve it. That's your preferences. If I say, I want a girl that's not a hoe, that has some, you know, sexual temperance, that um, isn't going to embarrass me when I walk in a room, beautiful, young, etc., youthful, right? I'm not saying, obviously, you know, I, I like girls that are 21, 22, right? Uh, that's considered, oh, that's, that's toxic and masculine, etc. Like, we demonize male preferences, but we don't demonize female preferences. Just like I said before, we don't criticize women, but we criticize men. Hmm. So how would you feel if, if women started doing that? Then where would you stand on your if women started doing what? podcast? <laughs> you had to get that in there, didn't you? <laughs> well, so it's fine, because you, you always listen. You always throw shade at me, so I'm just doing it back. <laughs> it's, hey, okay? man, it's all good. So, uh, so what, what was that before you made that little joke? And so you said, <laughs> what, what if women did what? If we started to say, like just to kind of hold ourselves accountable, stop dehumanizing men with their characteristics, traits, and qualities. Women are never gonna hold themselves accountable. We do, Why though. would they? they? They rarely do. Women have all the leverage in a dating marketplace now. Why would they hold themselves accountable? That's the truth. Hmm. How many delusional women do we have out here that quite frankly are useless bimbos that deserve, they feel they deserve a man that's six foot three, making a million dollars a year and is an athlete and et cetera. But you guys invest into the women as well. How do we you invest do. in them? Like you do, like you, like this is the problem because you'll advertise a certain life, you'll have all these things and you'll let women have this lifestyle. So no, we invest dick in those girls, nothing else. Those girls are, they're, 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 those girls perpetually typically stay single. They go from high value guy to high value guy. These girls don't get commitment. That's another mistake that girls make. They think just because a guy is dating them means they're gonna get a relationship and relationship attraction and sexual attraction are two different things. But modern day women make the cardinal mistake of conflating the two thinking they're the same. They're not at so, all. So how do you pull then? How do I pull? Yeah. What do you mean, how do I play? How, oh, um, how would you court me? How would I court you? Like, for like a ser serious relationship or like for a vetting process? For like a vetting process. Oh, well. And then see, like, how, how do you then determine? Okay, so I go on a date with a girl, right? And I get a feel for her, right? See what her family background is like, etc. Ask some, you know, prerequisite questions. And then what I do, the game doesn't really begin until after you have sex with the girl. And the reason why is because after that point, now she's going to start to really either sink or swim. And most girls, unfortunately, fail this test 
miserably because most girls think, I just offer, I'm just going to have sex with them and that's enough. And the reality is that's enough to get a date, but that's not enough to keep a guy. Most girls are terrible at retaining men. Girl game is being able to retain the guy. And most girls don't offer a value out of sex. So if they don't add you know, value at that point, and I'm going to obviously give her some instructions. Hey, I need you to do this. I need you to do that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to watch what she does very carefully. If I tell her, hey, I need you to do this or whatever, and she balks at it, well, okay, bam. I already know where she stands. Streets only. You know, recreational use. Back to the streets you return. Because I don't really have time for girls that are going to be liabilities. Mm, okay. Yeah. And that process could take, you know, up to a year plus. Oh, really? Yeah, you can't wife a girl up before a year. That's bare minimum. Yeah, yeah. I mean, men, men have to be very diligent about this because men take far more risk when they uh, date a girl than when a girl dates a guy. So do you, would you not be with a woman for her family background or whatever like that? Because I kind of feel when you do your background check, that those things are really important when you're dating someone because you kind of want to understand their mindset. Yeah, there's always exceptions to the rule, but in general, um, girls that come from broken homes typically tend to have very bad habits. Uh, girls that don't have a father in their life typically tend to have bad habits. Is this all? No, but you know, a majority of women that don't have these things in place typically don't end up being uh, good women in general. They don't have rudimentary basics. So, um, or if they have trauma in their life, whatever, you know, trauma destroys women, but it builds men. Uh, we react to trauma very differently. So, as a guy, it's your job to find a girl that isn't. And it's going to sound terrible, and hopefully, don't get cancer from me saying this. Tarnished. Tarnished. Yeah. It's not really fair to say tarnished. Yeah, well, I mean... Because, like, a lot of people do hold themselves accountable and do the work and personal development. Women? Well, yes, we do. So before you want to... <laughs> like, Most girls don't hold themselves accountable whatsoever. Most girls rarely self-approve, if ever, if I'm going to be 100% honest. Most girls think, I'm going to... This is me, take it or leave it. Most girls have that type of attitude. And, like, it comes back to what I was saying before. Men understand they must self-improve to get the women they want. Women don't understand that they must also self-improve to get the men they want and keep them. But most girls think, I'm special, I'm perfect the way that I am, I'm a princess, I deserve the world, and unfortunately, reality kind of smacks them in the face because they can't keep a guy long term. They just get used for sex. And once modern women, day women understand that you actually have to compete, you actually have to show up to that job interview for that prestigious law firm in a suit and actually be ready to do the work, you're never going to be able to keep a job, or in this case, keep a guy. Right. The guy's got to date intelligently. And I would say women have all the leverage. Most women are winning right now when it comes to the dating marketplace. And most guys are losing, which is why this type of content is exploding in popularity. No one has been decoding the matrix like this. Yeah. How will you raise a son with your mindset? I'm just curious to know. <laughs> uh, I would raise my son to not be a victim. Uh, you know, I'm at a point now where uh, very successful financially, but my son would not see any of this money at all. Yeah. I would make him get it out the mud. That's because um, like we discussed before, trust fund babies typically don't know what to do in life and how to, you know, they don't understand and appreciate the value of a dollar. And I thank my dad for instilling in that, me in, uh, that in me early. I mean, my first job was at McDonald's and I got fired. And I quickly learned that I didn't want to be in the service industry, but it made me appreciate people in the service industry. Oh, good. I like that. It's a bit hard. It's too full of, it will get preachy, but I was going to say no. Yeah. No? It doesn't, but it's a damn good down payment. It helps with a lot of things. Yeah. So I would say it's, it's the first step. Because there's a lot of rich people that are miserable. But if you get the money in the first place, it solves most of the problems. Yeah. Hmm. Would you say you're happy? 100%. Yeah? I'm, yeah, man. I mean, for me, like, uh, I've basically built up the kingdom that I wanted. You know, for a man, to be honest with you, most guys, if, if I'm living the dream. You know, I got my money on point. I'm doing well. Own some real estate property hanging out on YouTube, on the internet, um, you know, don't really have to ever look at price tag when I buy things. I'm a minimalist anyway. I, I don't spend money on stupid things. Um, this, like, watch is the nicest thing I have, and I bought this with real estate money. Always spend earned income on assets, you know, passive income on liabilities. But that's a whole other conversation. But, yeah, you know, date who I want, do what I want, don't have to answer to nobody. It's, it's great, man. Yeah, mm. living the dream. Good, I like that for you. Yeah, appreciate it. What, why can we why call guys we, bums, but we but can't call can't, girls hoes? Why can't a woman just like, be sexually liberated? Genuinely, why does she have to be a hoe? <laughs> why, does she, why does she have to be a hoe? Okay. Um, do you want to be a hoe? I don't really care what you think if you're going to say I'm a hoe. No, I, no, no but I, I'm saying. No, I'm asking you. I'm not, I don't really, I don't I'm really, not attacking you. I'm asking you this as a question. Do you want to be a hoe? I don't want to be labeled a hoe for what you guys paint as but, a hoe. Well, let's 
peel the layer back. Do you want to go out and have sex with a bunch of different men at the no. same time? Why would I want to do that? Okay. You want to hear something magical? Most yeah. women don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is that since most girls don't want to do that, most girls don't even want to be hoes, yet girls argue and you know, debate to be hoes. I don't get it. They don't even want to be hoes. No, we don't, we don't but it's just, kind of, it's just a double standard. We don't want you to... Wah, wah, wah. Sorry. There's a, when, are we going to cry? Like, I mean, there's a bunch of double standards no, that don't benefit men. I'm just saying, so I feel like this hyper-independence liberation like, movement is because we're just sick of men like you that want to just attack women for being able to do something that you guys are doing just as much. I'm not attacking. I'm reporting no, but a I'm fact. I'm saying in general. like. I'm reporting a fact. If a woman is promiscuous, she is by definition a hoe. Okay. So that is, that so, is the truth. And you, sleeping around? I am a homemaker. No, you're not. <laughs> you're also a hoe. Like men can't be hoes. Okay. The, okay. The, the men that have sex with a lot of women are successful. No, but in your in your eyes, as men, this is the thing. It's like this brotherhood thing. It's you guys. It's Incorrect. you. Okay, okay let's no. go back to biology. And no, no, we're not going to keep going back to biology. <laughs> Beca no, that's where it all no, stems from. No, but I'm just saying in general, like men are designed okay. to want to have sex with as many women as possible. Women are designed to have sex and procreate with the best man possible. So it all comes back to biology. It's amazing how like, logical this is, right? And feelings are outside of it. So when a man has sex with a bunch of women, he's accomplishing his biological needs and wants. When a woman has sex with the best guy that she can get and she has to get a commitment from that guy, she's accomplishing her biological wants. So being a hoe contradicts that. Being a hoe is what men want to do. Most women don't want to be hoes. They're hoes because of bad decisions, they've been lied to, etc. Every girl that I know that's been a hoe, look at Mia Khalifa, Lana Rose to be exact, um, or have a promiscuous past and people know about it, especially, they regret it because it limits their ability to lock down a guy in the future. When two women meet and they don't like each other, guess what's the first thing they say? You're a hoe. Because they know that's how you dig into them. So it's not even men that call girls hoes most of the time. You'll get called misogynist and canceled for that. Hopefully we don't get to cancel this podcast. But Never. But yeah, women, however, call each other hoes. It's women that slut shame more than men do. It's not the men. Dudes shut their mouths. Oh, we love hoes. Yeah, don't, don't rock the boat, bro. Yeah, Relax. Like men, men really do. You say they don't this, say nothing. You're the one sleeping with all the women. It's so. women that shame each other. Like, why, why is the girl always about like, being on top, firstly? Well, missionary is a fantastic position, first of all. And the other reason why men have to be on top is because that's the only thing women respect. No ways. But, like, not everyone wants a successful life, like, to be financially super successful. They don't. There's so many people that just like a nice, quiet, humble life. Here's the thing. All women, a majority, you know what? Stop saying all women as well. Let's, okay, now that you said that. All women want a guy that's better than them. Most women. Some women actually like to be dominant as well, just like you, like to be on top. <laughs> There's you know what those dominant women do when they're like dealing with a guy that, that they're dominating? What? They make fun of that guy in a group chat, say, look, he let me tie him up and step on him with heels. Ha, ha, ha. And then they go deal with a guy that's more dominant than them. I don't know. Women don't respect reason. guys that they're more dominant than. I feel like period. men just don't respect guys in that way. Like, why, firstly, why, why do you get annoyed and so frustrated about men that are simps? Like, you guys get really passionate about it. Because they, they're messing everything up. Like what? They're giving women that don't deserve attention and validation, attention and validation, messing up for everybody. I mean, it's fine. They're, they, honestly, they're making the marketplace harder for everybody else. But for me, it's like, whatever, because I just, I, I just go against the grain. So like, when I'm not a simp, girl's like, oh, wow, this is refreshing. This guy doesn't follow my lead and care what I think. Fantastic. I'm going to follow him. I don't, I don't know. I think it's different. I feel like I understand your point, but at the same time, I kind of feel like it's nice when you have men that are attentive to your needs and wants. By you being successful and being the man that she wants in general, you're already attentive to her needs. Here's the thing. You can't even get on a date with a girl unless you meet a bunch of prerequisites in the first place. So by you being the man that you are, you're already attentive to her needs. You already know what she wants up front. Women are very simple. They try to sit there and say that they're complicated, etc. But the things that women look for are almost universal across the world. Men teach other men how to be men. That's why fathers are important. That's not a mother's job. Yeah, I feel like it's still the balance though, because I kind of feel like, respectfully, men, it being your job to do that, it's really detrimental to men and men's mental health and men's feelings. Well, just to backtrack real quick, your mom's job is to nurture you into becoming a man, right? And then your dad teaches you how to actually be a man and live life as a man. That's why the father is so critical. You know, the dad's job is to keep the daughter off the shirt pole, son's out of jail. Now, going back to mental health, what's the question specifically, just so I make sure I answer it correctly? Just, I'm just saying, in general, like men's mental health, it's important and stuff like that. And I feel 
like your podcast kind of mm. like everything that you kind of promote and preach yeah it can be so detrimental to men and their feelings and it's not really fair i give men the reality a lot of sadness and depression is self-induced a lot of guys when they're sad and they feel down on themselves it's because quite frankly they're losers and the thing is as a man when you're not producing or you're not becoming somebody or you're not working towards something it's natural for you to start to feel sad because it goes against your innate nature as a man to create the world that we live in was created by men that had an innate need to create something and cultivate something so if you're not out there creating you're by default regressing i've always said it time doesn't stand still so if you're not progressing you're by default regressing so if you're regressing the natural reaction to that is i feel sad i'm depressed i need to do something about it but nine out of ten times it's self-induced men's mental health like male suicide is an issue no it definitely you know, is like there's so many other things that we can't control there's things beyond our control you know so you got to care about the things that you can control and you're 100 percent in control of your fitness you're in 100 percent in control of your ability to create money you're 100 percent control of your ability to learn how to deal with women and adapt to the new changing dating marketplace we don't make excuses over here. Survival of the fittest. Because the reality is this. If you're a loser, reality is going to reinforce that you're a loser. Women aren't going to respect you. Your peers aren't going to respect you. Your parents are going to be embarrassed by you. And no one's going to want to take you seriously. So you are 100% in control of how you live your life. And a lot of things that guys are sad about, it's within their control. If you're fat, it's your fault. If you're a loser, it's your fault. If you're broke, it's your fault. Guys got to take accountability. That's the difference between men and women. Men must take accountability. Women don't have to. Uh, you know, if they're pretty enough, a guy can come in and take accountability for them and take care of them. With, as a man, no one's coming to save you. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think really that's fair, especially on the Life broke... Life isn't fair. No, but I'm saying with the... That's, a, that's the but, whole theme of the show. Yeah, okay, but with, <laughs> with the whole broke situation on men, like, mm -hmm. there's only a top percentage of men that really make money. Okay. You know, so it's the majority of men that don't make money, that can't make money, and there's so many restrictions on how people can make can't? money. No, but No, but realistically... What is that there's, word? There's, no, but you know what I'm saying? Like, realistically. That's the fetus vocabulary. Not, no, but it's not fair to sit and, like, count. Okay, I know life's not fair before you want to keep saying this to me a hundred times. <laughs> but it's not actually fair. So many things environmental. Like, not everyone has the privilege of having parents that know that to teach them how to have money, to do things, and everything like that. So what's your argument for all the people that come from broken households that still are able to figure it out and go to Ivy League school or become uh, an NBA player no, or good, become but an athlete or become a police officer or work a job that's respectable. Anyone can, the thing is, is that we have more excuses for people. The problem is this, we live in a participation trophy society where we tell people that, hey, being mediocre is okay. You can't sit there eating Cheetos, being a fat piece of crap, not working, not going out there, doing something with your life and feel, feeling good is a privilege. That's the reality. You're not entitled to feeling good about yourself. You must earn that ability to look at yourself in the mirror and be proud. It must be earned. For women, it's given. Your beauty is given to you from birth. As a man, that ability to look at yourself in the mirror and be happy at what you see, that's earned. That's the difference between men and women. What would you do if your family didn't like me? Too bad. They would accept it. I've come this far. My parents trust my judgment at this point. I've done things that have disappointed them. I admit this. Uh, I've done, I've, you know, I don't really drink alcohol, but I've drank it in the past. I've never done a drug in my life, thankfully. But, um, you know, premarital sex, etc. These are things that go against Islam, and I've made, you know, mistakes in Islamic culture. But my parents trust my judgment, and they would accept it. Okay, interesting. What would you do if I had a lot of male friends? <laughs> we wouldn't be in a relationship. I would have screened that out in the beginning. Why? A girl that has a lot of guy friends is a problem. That's a liability. Not really. 100%. For you. Well, of course, for you, it's a benefit because you get attention, but for, it's, it's a liability. No guy wants a girl that's out there, out and about with a bunch of guy friends. That's unacceptable. That's unattractive. Why is it unacceptable? Because women value a man that has social proof. Men don't care about a woman's social proof. When you have friends, it's a liability. When I have friends, it's social proof. It makes me more attractive. It makes me more attractive. It makes you less attractive. Hmm. Interesting. What would you do if your friends were liking my pictures? They wouldn't. But if they were? I, wouldn't, I don't associate with men that can't attract women. All my friends are good with women. And there's a bunch of reasons for this, but you can't hang out with simps. You can't have friends that are thirsty for women. Those guys, 
well, number one, they don't understand the basic concept that men are leaders. So if I'm in business or friends with these guys, and I tell him, hey, we got a business meeting, and he tells me something stupid like, well, oh, well, my wife, uh, I can't, I told her this, or I, I can't because my wife said this. Well, I can't do business with that guy because his woman runs his life. Wait, I'm on, now I'm on your wife's schedule, your girlfriend's schedule? Well, maybe he just respects his wife. LOL. Men lead, women follow. Money comes first. Your mission, your career, et cetera, that all comes first. Your girl always comes like a second, distant, third, fourth, fifth. No. And women like it that way. No, they don't. Anytime a woman is the focal of a man's life, it's a problem. No. 100%. And the only way a man can give a woman the best life is when she's not the focus. I don't think so. Well, that's easy for you to say as a woman, but okay. as a man, you must go out there and produce. And for you to go out there and produce, a woman has to take a back seat to his mission. Okay, on your mission. Um, what would you do if my ex was after you? In what way? Um, just all those exes that just get really obsessed. Yeah, well, the Second Amendment in the United States is a fantastic thing. It allows you to have a firearm and defend yourself. And I live in Florida, stand your ground state, so he would probably end his, meet his demise. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm trained. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't miss. If someone's going to come at me and threaten my life, I'll hit him with a Zimmerman. Wouldn't you just like, wouldn't it be to just to address the situation and have a conversation? Nine out of ten times, if a guy's coming after me and he's an ex, more than likely he's a simp. Simps, remember that whole thing I told you about not falling in love? Yeah. Weird. See how it comes back in full, full circle? Guys that fall in love do stupid stuff like that. They don't understand that that girl is no longer in love with him. He's still in love. My emotions! Prison is filled with a bunch of guys that are emotionally erratic and can't control them. Those are a bunch of guys that are also in love. No, I don't think you should label it like that. Don't now put like this negative like, spin on being in love. There's a bunch of guys in prison that were in love. No, because there's also like this... Men, men just take things... Some men take things too far. I wouldn't take that... And why take, do they, don't take that away from being in love. Don't. Why, love why, it, being in love is why, a beautiful thing. Why don't do they take it. it too far? Because they're in love, correct? No. It's the root cause. We it's can't escape that. It's, it's your self-control. If, if like, you're able to... You can't control yourself when you're in love like that, though. That's my point. So he is going to come it's and deal... You haven't been in love, so you can't say that. I haven't been loved? You, no, I said you haven't been in love, so you can't say that. I've had love for women. Yeah, love for women, so you can't say I'm that. I'm able to so. be objective about it. That's how I give her the best experience. Okay. Going back to the guy, yeah, I mean, he's in love and he's going to do stupid stuff. Simps always do stupid stuff for girls because the girl doesn't like him anymore. He's coming in, blah, blah, blah. Now he's going to end his life because he's trying to test me. Self-defense, baby. Do you it's, think you two will see each other again? We're friends. <laughs> There's no such thing as friends between men and women. Why, though? I feel like we could be really good friends. No. Why? There's, I, I will never have a platonic female friend, ever. It's pointless. It's not pointless, though. It's pointless. Okay, we'll see. We'll There's be no benefit. We could be associates. Friends. No. <laughs> associates. <laughs> How do you think you've done on the date? Uh, debate date. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I thought this was a debate. Yeah. <laughs> I thought wait, this was supposed to be a date. Yes. Oh, would you like me to be more submissive? Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> would, that, would that make you feel better? It would, but it's okay. It was a debate. It's fine. Really? So next time, if, if you want to date... A debate so, date. So if debate a woman date. wants to date you, yeah. she just has to come being a pick-me. Mm, I wouldn't yes, say... It's yes. not a pick-me. It's intelligent. Okay. It's called being intelligent. Mm. understanding what men want you know like i mean would it be would i be considered i mean i mean giving a man what he wants there's nothing wrong with that no, of course not if i don't understand why it's a crime for a man to want a woman in the opposite of him when women want the opposite of themselves yeah no it's not a crime but it seemed to be today no it was not yeah being <laughs> toxically masculine is bad but that's what women really want mm. no girl wants a guy to show up in a dress and no guy wants a woman to show up like suck my dick or acting like a guy Okay. Men don't like masculine women. So if, if I surrender and be more submissive? It would make you way more attractive. Really? Yes. Okay. I would take you on a serious date if you were submissive. Oh, wow. Well. Yes. So we're just going <laughs> to... <laughs> Is this the part where we cut the camera? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't keep it wrong, Luke. <laughs>